October day something six seven eight I don't know what day it is anyways so today we're gonna do Q&A questions too. What is your favorite poodle cut? I think my favorite poodle cut is the Miami cut. I like that a lot. It's the one where it has the top knot and then it has the hair on the feet. Therapy had something similar to that for a while and then I shaved her completely, you know, well, except for her head. I think that's a really cute one. I also really like a continental cut, but you know, Miami is just kind of easier. Fluffy Poodle asks, short leash or long leash in public and why? So I like a short leash in public. I just don't feel like therapy needs to be far away from me. Our leash for in public is actually three feet long and I have a carabiner on the end of it. So if I need to step away and put her on a downstay for some reason, I can clip it to the shopping cart. So that's, that's kind of the length I prefer. I also have a crossbody leash that goes out to like six and a half feet. But whenever we use that, I keep her, you know, right beside me. I really like the rough wear, whatever it's called, the knot along, the short one. That's my favorite one. So that's usually what we use in public. What has been the most difficult thing for you to teach your dog so far? I think the hardest thing that we've learned so far is for her to be quiet. She's talkative, she likes to talk, and she also really gets excited and she barks when she's excited. So that has been our most difficult thing is just for her to learn to zip it. You don't have to scream with joy <laughs> every time we go somewhere. So that's been our hardest thing. How did you learn to train? So I've just had dogs forever. I've had dogs since I can remember really. Different dogs learn different ways and I've just kind of learned how to work with them. But yeah, I don't have any formal training or anything. Everything I've learned has just been through trial and error, through my life with dogs, kind of seeing what works and what doesn't. Whenever I was growing up, I had bigger dogs, like, I don't know, they're probably like 60 pounds or more. I think one was 90 pounds. That was a good size to learn with, let's put it that way, because you can't do anything. Whenever you're a little kid and you're like trying to get them to do something, if they don't want to, they're not going to. So you have to either A, get creative, or either B, give up. And I was always like, let's just get creative and come on, you know, encourage them type kid. I think that's really where I first started learning to train. That's basically how I learned. It's just throughout my life, through life with dogs. What made you choose therapy? Um, I didn't actually pick Fairby. Um, Fairby picked me and I will link the video to that. Um, I think it'll show up over here or either over here, but we actually did a video recently on how we met and it goes over, um, you know, how basically I was matched with Fairby, but I didn't pick her. So I'll link that video for you though. Do you think Fairby is above average in intelligence? No, I don't. She's super smart. She is extremely smart, aren't you? Yes. Very smart girl but I don't think she's above average. I feel like Bella was as smart as Faraby. I think Oscar was also as smart as Faraby, but he wasn't given the same upbringing that Bella was. I kind of did more hands off with Oscar where I was letting my husband, letting him kind of do the hands on training with Oscar. So I kind of took a step back because I know whoever trains the dog that lives with them, that person is going to be, you know, the one that they're gonna they're gonna like gravitate towards and they're gonna bond with. And so I didn't want to do the training with him. So I kind of sat back, shut up. I didn't do things with him. I think Oscar was just as smart as Bella and as Faraby. You brought me that, thank you. She puts toys straight in my face. That is so nice, thank you. I think he was as smart as them. Um, and I don't think that Faraby is necessarily like some crazy rocket scientist of a dog over here either. She is smart. She knows how to get her way. She likes to learn. Also, Bella loved to learn when she was little too. I didn't have as many things to teach Bella when she was little. Like, keep in mind, I got Bella in 2004. For you to find something like a do more with your dog where you're gonna have just a huge trick list, it wasn't as simple as just look online. 2004 internet is not what 2020 internet is. I think genetics plays a part in it, but I also think that how you raise them is a huge thing. And I know trainers like pretty much cringe whenever they hear someone saying that. I think it's learning how they communicate and, and like how you can react with that. I don't think Fairy is above average, but I think I spent an above average amount of time with her. So that's what I think. Was Fairy easy to train and did you train her by yourself or did you use a trainer? 
I trained here to be on my own 100%. We did go to school at Petco, but the reason we did that was for socialization purposes because they had a very inexpensive puppy program and they were close by my house. It was just a really good thing for us. By the time Therapy started school, um, she was 13, she was almost 14 weeks old. She already had her novice trick dog title, which is way above what they teach you in Petco or most puppy schools, they don't go that far. Usually they only teach you Usually in most puppy schools, they only teach you like sit, lay, stay. They'll talk to you about like potty training and, and stuff like that, like, you know, in case you don't know. And that's basically it. So by the time that Farabee started school, she already had her novice trick dog title, which is, I think it's 10 tricks. I'll link the video to her 13 week old trick dog submission video. Yeah, so the reason we went to puppy level one and two, um, I wanted her to get to play around other dogs and I also wanted her to work around distractions. And there are no better distractions than puppies. Um, puppies that are friends that she can play with, that she knows, hey, I get to play with these dogs. There is no better distraction at all to work around than those dogs. She didn't learn anything at school. The only thing that we really used that for was just distractions and for her to have playmates that were her own size and age. Because the way that our Petco did it, they broke down the groups into dogs who were similar size. And then the puppy classes, you have to be a certain age basically. And so Farabee was 14 weeks old when we started. She had a 13 week old classmate and a 15 week old classmate. So it was perfect. But I've actually taught her everything myself. y'all could ask anything you wanted and I mentioned that I do crafts so someone asked um, what crafts are good for kids 5 to 12 um, okay so I'm not a kids craft person but I can tell you things that I did whenever I was little one of the things I enjoyed doing was getting the little wooden pieces over like in Michael's section Michael's wood section and painting that kind of stuff you can also do that with I guess it's like ceramic stuff I don't know if that would be good for little bitty kids because they could break it, but the wood stuff they could do fine. Um, and they have anything from like Christmas ornaments over there all the way to, you know, like bird houses and little pieces of furniture. I think crochet is fun too. I don't know for five year olds, that might be a little bit intense if they don't have somebody who really knows what they're doing right there with them. A 12 year old, yeah, crochet would be fun. And there's also craft classes at Michael's usually. I don't know if there are craft classes right now because of all the stuff that's going on, but usually there are craft classes at Michael's that are specifically geared toward little bitty kids um, or you know, towards certain age groups of kids. So I'm editing the Q&A uh, Vlogtober video. It's gonna go up obviously tomorrow. Um, and I'm just realizing I didn't film a outro. So thank you guys for all the questions. I really enjoyed filming that. And maybe we might do one more of those this month just because Vlogtober is a lot to film and uh, keep up with every day. So I like answering questions. So I'll probably put up another Q&A. Um, for those of you who didn't get your question put in, I've been doing this over on Instagram, but you can leave your question below and I'll do another Q&A most likely this month and thanks for watching and by the way these blue blocks glasses are awesome I'll link them below for you guys um, they're just regular blue block glasses they're not like actual magnifying glasses or anything they're just regular blue blocks and they do really good